and we're live with Hope Residents and a very, very special group that we are so thrilled to have with us today. An outstanding panel, truly the next generation of power here in Miami and luxury real estate. And as we let everyone log in to join us, I'd like to actually speak with each one of you, beginning with you, Roberta. What's your biggest takeaway been from these past six months? So I think is uh, definitely, you know, technology you know, which we were using before, but now more than anything, it has helped so much, you know, to avoid the in-person, you know, contact, anything that technology has been great, you know, as far as marketing, as far as how you handle contracts, as far as, um, you know, how you advertise the properties. So I think is uh, keep, um, uh, it's like really like um, technology, you know, the use of technology. Thank you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Paula. Hi, April. Thank you. So I think in the last six months, the biggest takeaway for me has been a huge emphasis on empathy. It's uh, learning that through these times, we've had to do so much work and probably all have made a lot less money than we expected compared to the amount of work that we've put in. And it, the ones who are thriving and surviving is because we've been able to really channel the empathy of our clients, understand the critical moments that they're going through, position ourselves as a buyer or a seller, and try to understand emotionally where they're at so that we can keep the deal together. Because right now, everyone is seriously, you know, emotions are very high. And I think every transaction that I've gone through the pandemic has probably had three times more breaking points than average. And if there was not sensitivity and empathy, uh, channeled in there to keep things together and understand like us as brokers to be able to un not take it, things personal when people are at their worst because i think we do get people at their worst um it's been a huge asset you know for me inside and for my business as well thank you very much paula claudia over to you Yes, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Um, one of the things I've learned uh, over the past six months is that Miami has become more desirable than ever, okay? Miami has always been that city, but now more than ever, I don't know if it's because of the weather um, or whatnot, but it's become more desirable. And even then, um, I believe that real estate in Miami is still undervalued if you compare it to New York or London, which creates an, you know, a, a huge opportunity for buyers worldwide. You know, It's still an accessible and um, desirable city. And also, I, I believe that neighborhoods here have become more important than ever. Um, and people will seek to stay close to their homes and, and you know, where they work, they'll, they'll, you know, strategize around that, you know, they don't want to live, or they don't want to leave uh, too far um, away for work or for any other activities. Thank you very much, Claudia. Well, again, we're thrilled to have all three of you with us today, ready for a true inside look into the magic city and luxury real estate and everything that you each are seeing. Um, Roberta, I'd like to begin with you, Roberta Ingleto. If you can go ahead and introduce yourself and, and going back to as well, all three tremendous partners of Hope Residence and we're, we're thrilled to work with each one of you. So Roberta, beginning with you. Beginning with me. So. Um, I've been in real estate for the past 20 years. Um, I study finance, but so actually I started because of the finance and investment side of it. That's how I started with the real estate and technically the flexibility. But, you know, as you all know, we have to work a lot. It's not like a side job, you know, so it becomes obviously a full time if you want to be and, and do something meaningful. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing this for like 20 years. And um, like we were sharing before, I mean, we... Uh, basically, we focus more on the high-end residential. It's more like the luxury market. That just has been, not because I chose, but it's kind of like where, I guess, my friends and the people that I know, and then it just gets into that. So it's more like the high-end residential. And um, I love it. I mean, I love what I do, you know. It's been, uh, and it's always been like, you know, like improving. And I, 
I'm very much about always improving yourself and adapting. And there's new, like I said, like new technologies and new things, how you can help. Um, my way of working, I like to do things on a win-win. I, I, I think ethics and honesty are very important. I like to, I appreciate colleagues and people when they work in this uh, fashion. Uh, because, you know, I look at this as a long term, I like to, I like to work as a team, even with, you know, the realtors and brokers on the other side, I always say, we're, we're working together as a team here, let's make this work, you know, and um, even with buyers and sellers, I'm not trying to, when, I, when I'm talking to my buyers or sellers, it's not about, you know, taking the most advantage of the other side, it's like, how can we make this deal work for everybody, that everybody's happy about it, you know, and there's for everybody. I mean, I think we have a huge market, like Claudia was saying before. I mean, Miami more and more has becoming, I've been here for 25 years living in Miami. And so you can see the, 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 the growth that Miami has, has uh, gone through, you know, and um, obviously I've lived through all these developments when they started selling and everything. And it's a different city, you know, and more and more because of all the different reasons, not, not just the weather, uh, the taxes. And um, I think it's a nice place to live. Um, you know, more companies are moving down, so it's becoming more of a bigger city, you know, so there's many reasons we can name uh, so many restaurants and so many options we have here, everything you want to buy you have here, plus you're like, if you're going to like Europe or South America or Central America, you have all flights, mostly direct flights from here, so there's tons of reasons that we know. Um, and I think we have, a, we have a huge market, you know, we have so many properties and so much product to offer. And um, and that's what I think, you know, it's really working together and, and, and not just selling the properties, but, you know, presenting Miami for what it is and having people see Miami and value Miami for what Miami has to offer, you know. So it's, um, and I think also I at least try on my end to try to raise the standards of our industry, you know, because I think this is not something to be taken as a side job. I think the people like the... The ladies here you know we take this serious this is our job this is what we do like she's saying there's so much that goes into it there's a whole empathy and psychology and we you need to understand so many things and so many aspects about the business not just the technicality of it but also uh, people you need to understand people you're dealing with all these different sorts of people you know and sometimes they're very tough and they're very hard especially like luxury and high end you have a lot of type a's <laughs> you need to know how to deal with them is my way or the highway where if it's like that it's not going to work how can we make it work so there's a lot of you know move and things like that, that we have to go through uh so so you know hopefully you know we can we can help the like i said the industry to be better educate ourselves and um and impact in a positive way, you know? Thank you so much, Roberta. Sure. Thank you very much. Claudia Yenis, we're gonna move over to you. Yes. So would you want me to provide you a little bit of my background? Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead and just do an introduction. Yes. So I am originally from Cuba. I came here when I was 13 and I've lived in uh, Miami Beach for most of my adolescence. And, you know, I have a, a very unique background. Um, you know, I'm obsessed with tennis. So I played tennis uh, in, in college that provided a lot of discipline for me. Um, and I studied psychology and I also studied uh, business. And, and then after that, I actually pursued a master's in, in like, an MBA. And I was working, you know, my first job out of college was with Merrill Lynch. And that that was a great opportunity for me. I, I learned the value and or, or the importance of uh, client service, which, you know, like Roberta was saying, you know, you deal with a lot of type based personalities and, you know, just different backgrounds. And so, you know, by working there, I was able to learn how to how to talk to a client, right? And, and, and understand, first understand their needs and then provide a solution to those. Uh, but what I also learned was that I was not gonna be a financial advisor. I, I didn't really like the industry as much. Um, and so then after that, I, I got a second master's degree in, in sports just because I love tennis. And so I decided to work for the Miami Open, the tennis tournament, which, you know, also provided a lot of value because during that um, time of my life, 
um, you know, I, I, I learned the sales process, right? Which in reality, it's a buying process, right? Because it's, it's really all about the client and, and their needs and how you can provide, um, you know, gaps, or, I'm sorry, fill the gaps to those needs, right? With, with the product. And so, um, you know, during that time, I also learned that um, it's not really about the product itself, but about the value that you're bringing with the product. So, you know, when I used to sell these suites at the Miami Open, I learned that I wasn't really selling a space. I was really selling a platform for client entertainment or, you know, a, a way to strengthen relationships. And that was very meaningful and that was very impactful for me. Uh, but then, you know, as soon as I understood all of those things, I... I knew that I wanted to do something bigger and something with more possibilities, which is exactly what real estate, um, you know, provides to me personally. I think there's, you know, the opportunities are endless. Not only can you represent a buyer, but you represent a seller. Um, you know, that that person could be your client for the rest of your life um, and a friend at the end of the day. So, so that, you know, I'm, I'm very... I'm very proud of myself for having made the transition. And, you know, it, it's still a learning process for me, uh, but I think I'm, I'm in great hands. I started with Cervera Real Estate and that's the company I'm still with. And they provided me with the, you know, with the foundation to a great career. So I'm very thankful for that. And, and you know, I'm happy where I'm at today. Thank you, Claudia, very much. Paula Miranda, over to you. I'm Paola Marulanda. I was born and raised here in Miami. I come from a Latin background. My mother is Argentinian and my father is Colombian. And I've been in real estate for about 15 years. Um, I've been with Sotheby's from the very beginning. It's a brand that aligns very much with my uh, core values. And um, it's a brand that I identify with very much. My mother was in real estate for she's also been almost 30 years in real estate. I, of course, got to learn a lot from her at a very young age. Um, and much like uh, Claudia, I had no intention of being in real estate. I actually was you know, somewhat destined to be an attorney and everybody thought that was my path and that's where I was headed. And then I really came to a sudden change in, you know, change of heart where I just was enlightened and realized that I absolutely did not want to be an attorney. And I was being recruited by JP Morgan and Merrill Lynch and City. And it seemed really interesting because we actually identified everything that they were pitching at me for working in the private bank seemed wonderful. And then I actually just thought to myself, I was in a very transitional time in my life where I was probably going to have to move uh, to be with my father in Colombia for a couple of maybe a year or some time that was kind of undefined. And um, I said, crap, I mean, if I accept a job at JP Morgan and then I have to leave within a year, I'm gonna get blacklisted. So I might as well milk this real estate thing. I already had my license that had been doing it like just for fun, just so that I could make some money in the summers or whatever. And, um, and I thought, well, I'll pitch them that I'm gonna try the real estate thing for real. And then if that goes well, I'll get to sell stuff to their clients. If they really believe, they believe in me enough to give me a nice fat salary they'll believe in me enough to give me clients for real estate. And if that works out, then I never have to work for them. And if it doesn't, then I'll accept their offer two or three years down the line where I'm sure it'll get bigger and bigger. That's exactly what happened. Every year they offered me a bigger number. Every year I realized more how much I loved real estate and how much I did not want to be in the finance uh, world directly. And there's so many similarities that help from that process that help you be an amazing realtor, just like so many careers in law, you know, we have a lot of lawyers that are realtors, we have a lot of finance people that are realtors. These are skill sets that really make us uh, strong candidates for running our business and realizing that this whole, oh, we have control of our time and we have all this independence is just completely false. I mean, if you do, then you're not really doing it right if you're really running the business you don't have any free time and you don't you're working more hours and seven days a week and but it's a beautiful thing and it's your own business um and you know i've loved being at sotheby's and i started my own company within the branch which is called luxury homes connect and the reason i did that was to structure a more targeted approach to certain needs that i wanted to fulfill so i'm opening different divisions, a relocation division, a ultra high net worth division, a rental division, 
um, things so that I could implement really specific strategies and deliver, uh, you know, additional services on top of what, you know, our wonderful industry already demands and what our company gives. I wanted to take that a step further. Um, and that's why I opened Luxury Homes Connect. My, my biggest, uh, you know, let's say obsession or skill is all about strategy. It's the strategy uh, involved in every part of the transaction. It's about, you know, creating very specific methods to uh, that are curated for every transaction that will optimize every single, you know, relationship that you have and every deal that you do, whether you're buying or selling. And in each one, it's how Roberta and Claudia have both agreed we're on the same page. It's all about getting that win-win. If you don't have a win-win situation, it's pretty much a lose and that's not going to give you long-term business. So, you know, it's all about good strategy and creating these win-win situation and just optimizing relationships, transactions, your sale, your purchase. And real relationships. And I think all three of you, each one of you does a, a beautiful job at that. Just an outstanding group. Roberta, over to you is the real is with 2020 coming to an end in a month. What have you learned the most about the real estate industry here in Miami in these past 10 to 12 months? You mean as far as like the sales goals or like? The luxury real estate industry here in Miami in the past 10 to 12 months, what's your biggest takeaway been about the, the dominance of that industry here in South Florida? I think it's huge because um, we have demand. Like again, like we were talking before, I mean, we have the demand, the demand is here. And um, at least like, for example, all the rentals that we've had in luxury, we have no issues with people like non-payment. Let's say in the beginning, you know, when the whole COVID was starting, it wasn't even like an issue with any of the clients. Uh, everybody was still fine. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, you see this trend now of people wanting, you know, larger spaces is just a shift of maybe what they're looking for. You know what I mean? But like, at least on the luxury market, things are still, you know, moving. Um, uh, we see uh, the, as far as uh, purchases, like in homes, I mean, most of the people, they want um, things that they don't have to remodel a lot. You know, things are more like either new construction or they have been mostly remodeled. So you don't, maybe a little cosmetic things here and there, but not a lot of uh, remodels. Um, rentals, I mean, they are also, if you look at things like up to 10,000, you can't even find, you know what I mean? It's like they fly out of your hands. Um, the market between, as far as sales, I would say between like one and two million, uh, same thing, especially homes. I mean, they, 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 they're going pretty fast, you know, and that tells you that there's demand, you know what I mean? And, and, and this is what I say, I mean, at the end of the day, is what we were saying before, for the first time, of course, ever, like for one or two months, everything was stale. But other than that, there's there's life happening, right? So there's always people, you know, getting married, getting divorced, people getting a raise in their jobs, or people getting fired that they need to downsize or whatever, you know, or people, the kids move out of the house, all these things, they keep happening and that hasn't changed, you know? So there's always this demand from people um uh to buy to sell to to move to you know what i mean um so so again so the demand is there you know um as far as people coming from um uh, and we see we see people like selling homes now taking the opportunity of like selling homes and some are going into condos some people are buying larger homes um so there's a little bit of everything uh, but 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 I don't see at least on the luxury market. Again, there's demand and there's there's opportunities and there's um, there's people are trying. People are, uh, they're buying, they're selling, they're renting. Like there's movement, you know. A constant movement here in South Florida. Thank you, Roberta. Paula, yeah. over to you. What was your most defining moment these past ten to twelve months in luxury real estate? Mm, that's very specific. Most defining moment? Are we changing? Yeah. Most defining moment. <laughs> we had a, a one bullet point highlight. Okay. Okay. My most defining moment. In luxury um, real estate. Wow. That's just, you know what? If I could describe a, a, the moment, it was when all of this uncertainty was happening 
and my phone didn't stop ringing. Uh, to me, it was a beautiful thing. It actually made me really sensitive and it made me uh, start saying, you know what, right now I need to get super serious. I started waking up at 5 a.m. and taking the first two hours of the morning just to meditate and pray and uh, give myself some love and prepare for the overwhelming, uh, you know, massive amount of phone calls that I was about to get. And it was so sensitive because I felt so honored that we are so many, there's so many realtors. There's nothing but realtors flooding Miami and my phone is ringing. And these are people who are scared who are who are confused, who are concerned, who are looking for guidance, who are looking for support, and who are picking you out of a million, even if it's just to talk and ask you a question about the market, when they could be calling anybody else. And that for me was like, wow, like I was, I just was overwhelmed thinking, I, I don't even have time to pee the, those days, you know, those at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, I didn't even have time to breathe. I was like, if somebody called me for something outside of real estate, I, I probably would snap at them and be like, don't you know how busy I am right now? Like I'm taking care of people and their lives and their homes, like, like their families and, and, and their money and everything. And they're scared and they need me right now. And um, that's a, that was a pretty defining moment for me where you know, I think we all have to take a step back sometimes and remember like what a, a privilege and an honor it is to be called on for these services because they are, whether it's your first home or not, or even if it's a rental, doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the price. This is your home. It's either your home or it's your investment. There's, there's no other way to think about it. So it's either one of the biggest parts of your wallet which is everything that you stand for, kind of. Not everything that you stand for, but you know, it's everything that you work for and, and you know, et cetera. Or it's your home where you are gonna live and where you get refuge and now even where you work. So um, that, I don't know that that pertains specifically to the luxury market, but it was definitely a defining- No, it does, very, very well said. Thank you so much, Paula. Claudia, over to you. What? What was your most defining moment in luxury real estate in these past 10 to 12 months? Yes, so I'll say, and you know, I, I've been reflecting a lot just because this is, you know, it was an unprecedented situation and, you know, it takes a few months to digest what's happening, but then you do have some time to reflect. And so I've been doing that. And I think what I've, you know, what I've learned is that we are so resilient, right? And especially in Miami, uh, we, you know, we were quarantined for however many days that seemed like a year, but then everything picked up again. You know, the, the hotels are open, the restaurants are open, people are hopeful, people are still getting married or planning to get married. They're, they're having their bachelorette parties here in Miami like nothing had happened. Um, you know, people are thinking ahead still um, and they're, they're thinking, post pandemic, um, you know, for example, Nativo is, is the project that I, you know, I'm representing mostly and or I'm focused on right now. And that the, that those units, it's more of a secondary home. And you still see a lot of sales, right. And, you know, just in October, we had um, 12 sales, right. And so that makes you believe that people are thinking ahead, they're thinking of their secondary home, and not their immediate needs, um, as much as you would think. Um, and then also, you know, another thing that I think I've noticed is that people are willing to make deals. You know, you see it from the buyer side and you see it from the seller side, whereas before maybe the seller would be a little bit more stubborn and they would be like, no, we're not going down in price or no, we're not willing to, you know, keep the furniture or whatnot. But now I feel like, you know, people understand the situation that we're going through. They're more understanding and, you know, they're definitely more motivated than ever. If they want to sell, they, they truly want to sell. If they want to buy that, it's because they really want to buy. And so I think people are coming to agreements. People are being understanding of the situation. And I think that has created a lot of opportunity for real estate agents because yes, there's other things that are, are being difficult in the entire process, like Paola was saying, uh, but at the same time, people really want to make, make it happen. Very well said. Thank you so much, Claudia. 
Roberta, over to you talking about Pinecrest in South Miami, the single, home, single family home market there has been seeing an increased demand um, with social distancing and all the protocol, et cetera, et cetera. How have you adapted your business to this one? And have you seen more of an influx of, of locals or people from out of state? So one uh, is always listening to the client, right? Like what are their demands and what do they want? And what we see, um, which has been sometimes even like a deal breaker, for example, having a, no, a home office. So if you don't have a home office or at least a space, like a den or a space that you can do it, that could be sometimes like something that they turn away from. Um, another thing is, um, uh, what I mentioned before is like the condition of the home. I mean, they want things that they can pretty much like move in. They don't want things that they have to be doing a lot of remodel and spend a lot of money and you know how it is with construction. So again, if you have to do some minor little things here and there, that's fine. But if they have to do major things, you know, no, if you have something that is good. Um, so uh, as far as where people are coming from, uh, even local people, a lot of local people, we have some people not local that we've been showing homes and everything, but those are people that they were, they were moving here even before the pandemic. You know, maybe the pandemic even extended a little bit because of visa and everything, things got postponed for some people to actually be able to come here. But those are people that they already had set their minds to move here before, regardless of the pandemic, right? So, um, and, and, uh, so yeah, a lot of people is like having the space, you know, more space, um, open space and like with light, you know, because you spend more time, people want to entertain, you know, so since a lot of places you can't go or you don't know what's gonna happen again with, uh, with um, amenities and things like that. So they wanna have a decent, you know, yard um, uh, space, but definitely I would say office. Office is a big thing. Thank you very much, Roberta. Paula, over to you. When we think about South Florida, South Beach, South of Fifth, I think people think of condos. You have a really amazing listing over there. It's a two-story residence right in the heart of SoFi. Can you tell us a little bit about it, the $15 million listing there? Yes, absolutely. So that's a two-story, it's called the beach house because it has the whole, the whole space and feel of a single family home. It's what I call, you know, the ultimate hybrid property because it can satisfy that, that need that the market is having of having the safety and the privacy of and amenities of a, sec, of a secured building. Um, because as much as the single family home market is just absolutely killing it and stealing the show, um, there are a lot of people who are come from from cities, high tech states, uh, and cities that they're very used to being in condos, and uh, the families don't feel sometimes as secure, as comfortable being in a single family home without having all of the, you know, assets that a that a building has, and this particular property is just the only you you can't make it up like you can't you can't. You can't have something like that in all of South of Fifth, which is such an elite neighborhood. And it has 6,000 over, a little over 6,000 square feet interior, about 7,000 adjusted square feet and has private terraces. It has office spaces. It has an incredible glass to ceiling. You know, you, you came inside that beautiful wine vault that holds over 300 bottles. And inside of that wine vault is your home office where you could see right through the glass from the bottles and see the beach. Um, it's fantastic for entertaining. Um, I think it's a, a property that's really gonna, you know, make a family very happy who's not really comfortable with being in a single family home. And like Claudia was saying, and Roberta was saying, they don't want to be far away from the action, but you also get to have here this house like structure with the staff ratio that's three to one, where you have less than 30 buildings, which at no point are occupied at more than 30%, uh, you know, where they'll drive over to your mom's house and pick her up to take her to the beach for you and then bring you champagne to your, you know, to your beach chair. It's just, it's, it's incredible. The level you know, of you know. service there is, is unbelievable. And it's really like a two story single family home right there on the Atlantic Ocean and it's in a boutique condominium building. It's 
truly exceptional. It really is. There's just not a single property, you know, like it. And it's uh, very interesting. I'm excited to see who will be the person who gets to live there. Very different. Pick me. <laughs> I know. Really exciting. Fire <laughs> will take Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paula. Claudia, over to you. Exclusive in-house agent there at Nativo, Miami. A really great project. Can you tell us about the penthouse launch there? Yes. So first, before I dive into those details, April, I would love to provide a little bit more information about the project itself. Um, and the reason why I'm so excited about this project is because it, you know, it provides solutions to a lot of problems or I guess needs right in the market. Um, see, you know, obviously throughout these past years, um, you, you've got your hotels and then you, you get the Airbnbs, right? Because, um, and, and in fact, people prefer, 71% of families with children, they prefer Airbnbs rather than hotels because of the conveniences that the Airbnb provides, right? You know, when you go to an Airbnb, you can go ahead and, you know, cook your own meals and, and plan your day that way. Now, what the current market for Airbnb Airbnb is lacking at the moment is, you know, the, the consistency of a hotel, right? Because most of us could agree that most Airbnbs look better in pictures than, than in real life. And so, you know, it, it, they lack that consistency and they lack all of those amenities and, and, um, and luxuries of a hotel that people still desire. And so, What's great about Nativo is that we're providing the best of both worlds. We're providing the comfort of a home because all of our units come, you know, with all of the appliances. So like the kitchen, washer, dryer, et cetera. And at the same time, we have the best, we will have the best amenities available. We literally have 70,000 square feet of amenities, which is three full floors. And so that, that in itself, you know, we're, we're creating our own space in the market, which is pretty exciting. And then, you know, one of our greatest advantages is that there are no red rental restrictions. You know, if, if you ask Roberta and you ask uh, Paola on the panel about, you know, what's one thing that may not be extremely great about th these condos is that they have restrictions in rentals. You could only rent it for, you know, six months minimum or a year. And so Nativo Miami, the, the residences there will be one of the first ones that you'll be able to rent it or have zero rental restrictions, meaning you can rent it for as little as one day, all the way up to a year or any time in between, if you want to. Okay, that that's, that's the other thing. It's, it's a very flexible uh, product that you know, you can do with it whatever you want. Now, the other great advantage, obviously, is that it's strategically located in the heart of downtown Miami. It's going to be on, you know, 259 Northeast 6th Street. And just, you know, for those in the, in the audience that don't know exactly where that is, well, we're right in front of American Airlines Arena. We are three minutes away from the Port of Miami, which is a huge economic driver in downtown Miami area. Um, you know, what we know is that 6 million passengers pass uh, by that through that um, um, through the Port of Miami on a yearly basis. And those individuals, they tend to stay three to four days in my in nearby areas before and after their vacation on the cruise and so we're very fortunate to you know have a building that it's in the heart of this huge highly dense short-term rental market that that we have due to all of these economic drivers that you know i just pointed out such as the port of miami and so that creates a huge opportunity for owners, because not only are you going to have a beautiful second home in Miami, but you could actually put it to rent uh, and make it work for you when you're not here and where you're not occupying it, which is incredible. And then, you know, the other great thing about it is that units come fully finished and uh, furnished, providing the owner with a turnkey solution, like Roberta was saying, people no longer want to take the time to, you know, put this, you know, house together. We, we provide that to you. We have something that 
will be marketable and rentable uh, once you're not occupying it. And you know, lastly, we have an optional in-house property management service that will put these units um, available in the market through every single home training platform available. And so you don't even have to worry about that. So you know, as an owner, you don't have to worry about having a rentable, a beautiful unit, but you also don't have to worry about you know, how to price it and, 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 and any of those things because we have an optional property management service that will do that for, for the clients. And so now and to answer your question about the penthouse launch, we did this um, uh, last Thursday, I believe, or a couple of Thursdays ago, and it's been incredible. I mean, the Nativo, we're over 60% sold, okay, of the um, general residences, and we have 448 of them. So you know it's a product that has sparked interest worldwide. But let me tell you, after we launched the, the penthouse event, it was crazy. You know, we sold one literally... 24 hours later, we've sold, I believe, three or four already, and we've got a couple in the pipeline right now. And what's great about them is that they're going to be higher, like the, the ceiling is going to be higher, t uh, uh, 10 feet long, or high, I'm sorry. And, you know, restoration hardware, it's going to be the interior designer, and it's just going to be so modern, so chic, so um, urban at the same time. And, you know, our appliances are by um, Sub-Zero and Wolf appliances, and it's just an, a tremendous upgrade from the general residences. And then just being on the top floor is that much more, you know, sexier, which is, um, you know, something that aligns very well with, with our lifestyle here in Miami. So I, I'm pretty excited about the project in, you know, in general, uh, because, we're not only residences, but we also have a hotel component. We have office spaces. We're creating a lifestyle around it, uh, but the penthouses are very special. It's a great, great project. And talking about being an asset for the area as well. Absolutely. For it's the just, neighborhood there. Right, it's, it's just a product or a project with you know utility, which I think is huge. Also, especially since it's, you know, mostly for a, a secondary home for someone, you want that unit to work for you when you're not occupying it, you know, so, so I think that's, that's the key to it. And, and that's why I'm so proud to uh, present it and so proud to, to be part of it. Excuse Thank me, you. Gabriel, can I ask Claudia something? Sure. Floor is your Roberta. No, no, because I like it and, and uh, I'll say something, it's positive about it, but how many penthouses? So penthouse you call like the top, I guess, floor units or because you said you sold a, a, a few. So what is it? Yes, great question. So we actually have four floors of penthouses. So we start on the 51st floor. That's the last floor of the building. So that's 51st, then 50th then 49 and then 48. But in okay. each floor, we actually have 16 units. So okay. we have a mix. So you could actually have a studio that it's a penthouse. And you know the price points are pretty reasonable for um, a studio. I believe you can pay for the penthouses. You can pay, um, I think it's uh, around 600,000. And for the, just the right below the penthouses, you can get a studio for mid 400s actually mid three, uh, 300s. And so it's a very, you know, the prices are very reasonable. The reason for that being that downtown Miami is still an area that's growing. And so, you know, that, that creates an opportunity for the, the owner. And, you know, we anticipate or we hope that in the near future, it'll appreciate because of all these things that are the growth of the area, you know, including um, the uh, Miami World Center, which, you know, as soon as that gets built, it's just going to add that much more value to the downtown area. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's pretty exciting. I invite you guys, you know, Roberta, I think Paola has already been here, but Roberta, you got you to gotta make an appointment here with me and um, I'll show you everything we have to offer so that you can then show your clients um, all about it. I have April just to, it's a quick, you know, I think the, the concept is be, be, besides the actual location, but I think the concept there's demand. Okay. Because I see at least for my listings and the properties we do, we got tons of people calling us like daily 
Can I rent this for a short term? Can I, like right now, it's crazy how many people I'm turning down because I'm like, listen, I don't have short term. I don't have what to offer. And the thing is like that because of all the restriction of the buildings, because of the restriction or they're not nicely furnished, but mostly you have restriction. And two, they don't have like the nice furniture and the nice whatever, you know? And 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 again, I think besides the, the you know, because you could be in Miami Beach or I don't know if they're allowed with the, whatever, but but the thing is that the demand, I think there's a huge demand for people that want this short term and they don't have it. And I agree. But I, again, more than even the location, it's the concept and the demand for that. You know, like you're saying, you have families and you have people staying over, you know, for one, two, three months, whatever. They want, they want the living room, they want the space, they want the kitchen, they want to cook. They, they, they don't want just like a little hotel room. So I do believe in this concept like a lot. And I see personally all, with all the people that call us and every, there's a huge, huge, I'll definitely stop. Yeah. Back. So it, it's just a positive thing to say because, and I wouldn't be saying it's like, because I see it, I leave it. And when we have like all the time we have it, I'm like, no, we don't do. It's kind of like, like, what can I offer? You know what I mean? It's like, we need that. Like, we need the product to, to, to send these people. So for an investor, it's great. And, and for these people coming here, that eventually then they might want to buy or whatever, you know? So I think it's going to do really well. Absolutely. I mean, if this building uh, was built in, you know, somewhere else in Miami, right? It'll be a very good opportunity because of that uh, freedom. <laughs> And, and rentals, but because it's in downtown Miami, it's that much more special because this is where we have a high concentration of that short-term rental market. Because yeah. of the Port of Miami, like I said, American Airlines Arena, it's right there. People travel for a couple of days just to, you know, uh, watch a game or, you know, um, watch a, a, a concert or whatnot. We have Bayfront Park, or I'm sorry, Bayside, Bayside Marketplace. It's literally, you know, walking distance. And we have 15 million visitors a year going through there. I mean, yeah. that's just mind blowing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, so we'll be exposed to this huge, highly dense short-term rental market that then the owners are gonna be able to capitalize on, which is yeah. the opportunity for them. Yeah. Claudia, we've had some inquiries too. A real, or Paula, you wanna go ahead? Sorry, I just wanted to answer. I saw that somebody asked a question if the beach house was a penthouse. Um, so I wanted to explain that the beach house is the complete opposite of a penthouse. It is actually the first two floors of the building. And it has literally, I actually have a flyer from the event right here. This is the building right on south of Fifth. And this is the, my property is these two floors right here. And I want to show you how they look out. It looks right out onto the beach. So you're right at the foot of south of Fifth. Uh, beach and it's the first two stories. We've had some requests too for contact info, which I was going to do at the end, but let's go ahead and do that. Claudia, what's the easiest way for someone to contact you? Absolutely. So you can reach me via email and you can reach me at C Yanis, like my last name, and then at nativomiami.com. I can go ahead and, and write it on the group chat. And then my phone number, it's 786-449-8688. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat. Paula, over to you. Okay, how do I write it in the chat? There's a, a chat um, in the middle uh, at the bottom, Paola, that says chat, like right next to participants. But Paola, if you can read it too, it would be yeah. great. My, the best way to reach me would be uh, my first name at myfullname.com. That's just the easiest. So Paola at paolamarulanda.com. And my phone number is 305-496-0359. Thank you so much. Roberta, I see it in the group chat too, but if you can read it as well. Sure. It's uh, Roberta at conciergebrokers.com and my cell WhatsApp, 305-778-7343. Uh, Thank you very much. Talking about education, and you know, we do have a big influx moving here to South Florida from the New England area, New York, obviously. Starting with you, Roberta, what would your recommendation be for a residential area that would have education in the high school system on par with, you know, Connecticut, New England, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, I like, I mean, uh, the growth 
the growth could be uh, you have Ransom Middle School and High School. Ransom, it's a great school. Uh, in the Gables, you have Gulliver. I mean, my kids all attended Gulliver. And um, uh, I think it's also a great school. Uh, also, again, depending on the age, I do like Gulliver, the fact that you go from little kids all the way to high school. Gulliver, um, Ransom is just middle school and high school. So it, it depends a little bit, but I would say the whole, you know, Coconut Grove and then South Miami, Pinecrest and that side of the East Gables, all that part, you have like a lot of great schools around that area. A lot of great schools. They're residential and you have great schools. Thank you, Roberta. Paula, recommendations for neighborhoods. Definitely the first go-to is, and the, here's what's happening right now. It's Coral Gables and it's Miami Beach. Like that, 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 that's the biggest where all the people are going for the schools and the single family homes and the families that you're talking about from these areas. They're going to Coral, Coconut Grove, Coral Gables and all the areas that she just mentioned. And they're going to Miami Beach. The, 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 the private school in Miami Beach that's equivalent to the Ransom and to the Gulliver is, a Miami Country Day. And you know, Miami just has an incredible school system all over. Yeah. I mean, we just have incredible schools. We have the, one of the best public school systems out there and private schools, the best. So I myself went to Gulliver. I have a lot of friends from Ransom and I've also you know, seen how different, different students from different schools have evolved and it's, it's beautiful. We have nothing but great schools nearby and especially now with the, with the private schools and the, the fact that our market is being penetrated mostly by the ultra high net worth also means you can put your kid wherever you want. So, you know, our schools are phenomenal. Thank you, Paula. Claudia, anything you'd like to add? Yes, um, I think, you know, it all depends on what's important to the parents and, and the children, right? If, you know, if, if education is, is one of them, but also sports, I think you need to consider that as well. You know, I, I played tennis growing up. I played tennis in high school and then in college. And so um, I remember I wanted Miami Beach. We, we didn't have, I, I went to Miami Beach senior high school. We didn't have a great tennis team, but we built one, right? And so I was always jealous of like Aventura where they have Michael Kropp, which is a, you know, it's not a private school, but I, I believe it's a, um, it's, it's still a great school. And so I definitely recommend that area like Aventura, Sunny Isles area, Michael Crop Con Country Day is incredible. Um, but I also, you know, if they want to do art, if they want to pursue art, we have great um, schools that are, I, I forget the name of them right now. They're not private and they're not public, but they're- um, Charter? like a charter school yes and so and I know that there's one in Dash like I'm, I'm sorry in the design district that's wow. called Dash my twin sister went there for art and she's done you know amazing for herself and you know that's a great school for for that if they're into arts and then also in you know in Key Biscayne you've got Mast Academy which is another one of those great schools that you know you don't have to pay so much you don't have to pay anything for for um, attendance and it, they're still great schools so I think, like everyone said, I think there's uh, amazing options out there. And, you know, we're just so lucky that because of those options, you get to be very picky, right? And you get to choose something that aligns very well with the interests of, of the children. So it, it's a matter of first identifying what those needs are and then finding a school that can provide a solution for that, you know? So, so yeah. Sorry, I was a little broad in my choice <laughs> of school. We have so, so many great neighborhoods and, and school systems here in South Florida. So A hundred percent. I think, Claudia, that you hit the hail, no, what is it? Hit the nail on the head. <laughs> that you hit the nail on the head with the fact that we're just surrounded by these great schools where we have this really specific opportunity to cater to the individual. And that and that's what, what, what came from my personal experience. And what I've seen is it's not even about where you're living. It's about you know, talking that you can have in one household, three kids, and they're all going to be going to different schools, because if you're into sports, this is the option for you. And this is not if you're into arts, if you're into music, if you're into, if you're just an academic, and even if you're an academic, there's so many different, you know, there's the IB program, the AP program, the honors programs, different, and, and they all just cater to your kids so much. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. A hundred percent. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Claudia. 
Roberta, over to you. If you have someone with a million dollar investment to make into South Florida real estate, where are you directing them? The Grove. The Grove. I like the Grove. I think for before, for a while, um, it was the one like legging, right? Like you saw maybe beach and then you saw sunny isles and then you saw all these different areas like growing whatever and the Grove was a little bit like behind. And now that they're doing Coco Walk, now that they're doing, you know, like in front of the water. Uh, now, I mean, there's so many, um, there's new restaurants. I mean, I just think it's like so cool and it's so central in a way because you're close to the airport, you're close to downtown, you're close to all, like I said, these good schools. Um, you have a good mixture of people. You have, uh, you know, it's residential, but you also have this commercial side of it with the restaurants and activities and things. Um, I, I, I would say that's the first thing, thing that like pops in. And for that amount, you can buy like a house or you can buy like a condo, you know? Uh, and I just think it's a great, I think it's a great area. It's a great area. It's very central and it keeps going up. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, I, I, the growth. Thank you, Roberta. Paula, over to you. I could not agree with Roberta Moore. I personally lived for 17 years in Coconut Grove and that's not, I, I'm not biased on it. Actually, I track very much the statistics of different neighborhoods and at a time when most neighborhoods were going up and some went down, for example, there was a year, just one or two years ago that even Key Biscayne went yeah. down and some many neighborhoods, even Miami Beach had a slower increase in value than did anywhere else. Coconut Grove freaking killed it and it's still just a newborn baby. It's literally a newborn baby and it's gonna kill it. So if you have your 1 million and you can find the right property, you, you probably can't go wrong in Coconut Grove. It's just, a, it's an area that's, uh, I would consider relatively safe um, to invest your million dollars in. Thank you, Paula. Claudia? Yes, so I think it's obviously based on pref uh, uh, personal preferences. I would invest also, there's other areas in Miami that are growing. And so I would definitely invest in new construction. And so like in the future, right? And I think a great area to do so is downtown Miami and Edgewater. Um, you know, the transformation of these two cities are, you know, that it's, it's incredible. I mean, back when I was in high school, you know, these areas were not the greatest areas, but now they've become it, right? And so, and, and like I said, with the same thing with Nativo, the, uh, the price point is still very affordable because it's an area that's still growing, right? And so I would definitely invested, uh, invest in, in downtown and Edgewater. And I mean, there's just incredible pre-construction projects going on, not only here in downtown, but also in, in Edgewater, such as, um, you know, Missoni Bahia and Elise. So I think those are great options. And then I think what makes it so much more special is also the walkability, right? It's so accessible. Things are so accessible. You can walk um, and, you know, just the ambience and the environment is, is so beautiful because you have all these vibrant, you know, uh, personalities and people from different uh, nationalities. And so I think those two areas are, are very special for me. Thank you, Claudia. Of course. Each one of you, you're also diverse with with your backgrounds and everything that you can offer a potential purchaser. Paula, beginning with you, what services are you able to offer someone in addition to real estate where you're really just a one-stop shop? Wow, I think we most of us are like an all-stop shop. Yep. Uh, actually, this morning I was having a, a juice with a client and she was like, you're my therapist, you're my GC, you're my... Uh, you're my this you're like uh, the list is, is long because and 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 I, and I do think that as 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 we develop uh, you know in our careers we start kind of limiting a little bit more and more uh, to certain depending on our relationship because we just couldn't possibly do like the best job at what we're supposed to do which is the transactional side if we're catering to you know such a high full menu but I think I think that you have to pick a few of the important services that you should that that are worth it for you to make that extra leap, leap with for example right now that we have so many people relocating 
we do want to be educated and help people talk about, you know, what schools might be a good fit. But I think there's a fine line between uh, the services that we provide that are outside of real estate and also how we provide them. For example, sometimes I see um, realtors who get eager and say, I will help your child get into such and such school. You shouldn't, oh, wow. you shouldn't do that. You, know, you shouldn't say that you're going to help them get into a certain school because then what does that also say about you and how you qualify people that you put into these schools, right? Like that's not our role. We are here to educate and we are here to support and we are here to connect. So I think anything that falls into those three categories, you know, advise, connect and support, it, it's fair game. Um, you know, I think we have to be very in tune with what's happening emotionally with our clients. If we choose not to be, it's our loss because then we won't be able to understand exactly what's going on with their decision-making process and we won't be able to give the, the best support and especially when it comes to negotiating and dealing with the two sides of the, of the party. So you really do want to understand where, they're, where your families are financially, where they are emotionally, where they are mentally, where they are in their marriage or in their not marriage. Uh, you know, what, you, you, you want that role it's going to be of value to you in a negotiating standpoint and to deliver, you know, that service. And, um, I think, uh, what, what other things, I think connecting is a major one, you know, the bigger your network and the quicker you're able to, to provide solutions for your clients, the better, but, you know, you also have to protect your time and you also have to protect your energy and, and, and be able to give everyone a fair amount of these services without being, completely involved every step of the way. And there's also liability when it comes to that. If you become too involved sometimes, even if you're doing it from the kindness of your heart, it ends up screwing you over because the outcome or whatever's happening in their life emotionally, you know, we tend to be the first people that get, um, you know, blamed, attacked or attributed to. If it's, if anything, it's just merely by association. We're there, you had a bad day with your wife or husband, guess who's gonna get, you know, yelled out today, probably your realtor. <laughs> that, that's funny, but it's true. <laughs> well, we Claudia. have to have the emotional to know that it's, it's, not, it's not about that and that if you're being treated wrong, it's probably has nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah, I know 100%. I think, um, you know, I think I, um, I know my strength Okay, in 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 the industry, and I think my strength is uh, to provide people with with the options and with the knowledge of the local market. And then, you know, I always try to advise my clients as to you know what to do or what not. But but clients, you know, they just they tend to do what they think is best, and I and I think it's it's fine because they know themselves better than I ever will, right? So my job is to provide them with the options, to provide them with the knowledge, uh, with the insights, and then you know have them make the decision. And I think since I know what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are, what I do is I, I you know I provide them with the team. Right, because I know that I'm great at something, but I know that I'm not so great at something else. But I want to make sure that they have access to that ex expertise. So you know, I I, I delegate, and and that's something that it's it, it was hard at the beginning and with everything because you want to provide as much value as possible. But I I've understood that you provide the most value when you let people do their job. And so that's how I try to operate. And, you know, so far it, it's been great. Thank you, Claudia. Roberta, over to you. So the same thing, I mean, I like to more like a consulting. Yes. You know, it comes to me, like, I like to give my, my opinion. Sometimes it's like, I would even say like, don't buy this or whatever, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like Claudia says, what the client wants, like they want certain things. So it's really educating, giving the options and saying, okay, if you buy here, I also like, for example, when you're representing a buyer, you know, when you buy this property, it's not just like today, think about the future, you know, think about how can you sell this? You know, it's not to say, but sometimes you have those properties that maybe they have a good price, but like it's a terrible view and you can't change that. 
you know, the inside you can remodel, you can do these. There's certain things you can't really change, you know, some layouts and they're like weird shapes or whatever. You know what I mean? So I try to give, I do try to give the value in it. Uh, like, for example, and, and like, like you were saying, you know, delegating. Yes, I don't want some people when they come too much, even though from the business we've done it so often, we kind of like know the answer. If this is a legal question, this is the attorney. I'm not going to answer for you because then it's like, you know, you said that or whatever. No, you know, uh, as far as banking goes, um, you know, the same thing. I kind of like know and I can kind of like direct to go with this banker, go with that. This is fair, whatever. I like to oversee because I want to make sure things get done. It's kind of like, saying like, yes, you have to delegate. But at the same time, we're the one putting everything together. You know, like you have the group of inspectors, like everybody, that's fine. But uh, I, I really like to give the value in that sense. And like, for example, on the seller side, you know, the same thing, you're selling their property. You know, sometimes you're just giving uh, ideas and things that they can improve and maybe spend a little bit money in the property, but it goes a long way because sometimes it can be very, it's cosmetic stuff or maintenance stuff, but it makes a big difference. You know what I mean? Like if you do it uh, and you do it the right way with the right uh, cost and everything, it, it goes, woo, like in the price you recuperate, you know, or you can sell much faster, rent much faster, whatever. So. So the, the, I would say that I, I love negotiating. If my skills, if you were to say, I love negotiating, I love getting good deals, like I said, on both sides, negotiating, understanding the contracts. I think it's important. You know, some things I'm even like, whatever, you know, you pick your fights, like I say, you know, some things is not relevant, but some things they are. And unfortunately what's in the contract, we have to go. And then, um, and as far as like saying like the GC and stuff, I have a separate company that does construction, honestly, because in the beginning we used to help the clients. Oh, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? I'm like, this is a full-time job. So I have a completely separate company. I have all my subs, all the people that work that's run completely separate from the real estate company. Why? Because it's a completely separate business, you know? And, and, and so, and also because then you're valued in a different way okay this is the service for here this is as it relates to the real estate this is construction this is remodel this is a completely separate business and we don't do things we do everything with the licenses and things how it has to be done so it's not a a whatever you know what i mean and 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 just so you're separate you know um but um but yeah and it's like paola was saying you know at the end of the day you have to know a little bit of everything and you have to understand everything and then you delegate, you know, and then based on everything and based on being the psychologist and this and the, that, you put it all together. There, there's no right or wrong. And there's no like formula because everybody's different. Everybody's different than residential. We're talking residential real estate. This is not commercial. Commercial is plain numbers and whatever. This is residential, you know, and, and, and residential, every family, every people, everybody, um, you know, I have people that are coming single people or or like a couple that want a 4,000 square foot condo you know some other people might think that's for a family you know but not for a single but you know they like the space they like they like to have it okay so everybody's different you know what I mean the, so you have to to accommodate to it and try to give um as much as advice as possible so they can make their own right what the decision that's right for them you know, we give all the tools and we give all the people that maybe have to be involved in it and, and you handed it at the end, ultimately, they make an informed decision, you know? Well said. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Claudia. Thank each one of you. Again, tremendous partners of Hope Residence and really great insight that you all shared with us for South Florida Luxury Real Estate. Thank you so much for your time and your partnership and Looking forward to so much good stuff ahead. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity, April, to, you know, showcase our, you know, our listings and, you know, all the things that all the real estate uh, projects that we're working on. I'm very thankful for it. And I'm, I'm so honored to be part of that. I was able to be part of this panel. I mean, I look up to Roberta and I look, I look up to Paola so much. So for me, this is like a dream come true. As cheesy as it sounds, it's, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you and i'm happy i'm happy to be here with you guys too you know it's so good to see you can see the eyes you know what i'm saying like good people good and educated and and it's so 
like honestly, like to be able to say that, that we have colleagues and people like that, that we're like, you know, that you know the market, that you know what you're doing, that you have good interests, that you're knowledgeable, that you want to be the best. You know what I mean? And it's like I say, there's market for everybody, you know, but it's good to see people that, that like that, that inspire you and that you feel like, oh my God, like maybe, you know, even like we should get together. <laughs> Like, this is what I like, you know, you learn from each other, you inspire each other, and, and we all have, we're, we're, da we're daily, we're learning, every day we're learning, every day is like, oh my God, now this, you know, how did you handle, how did you do, what work, you know, things like that. I think it's great, you know, I think it's great. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Guys, so much, and we'll be in touch. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. Bye. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.